Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 38, and today we're going to spice things up again because we have Ashley back with us today. <laughs> I know there's a lot of individuals out there who actually prefer Ashley more than me. Makes me wonder why I even continue with these vlogs. Maybe we should just let you take over the vlog part. I don't know of the channel. I think but, we're doing great. <laughs> but nonetheless, what we're going to do today is we have a lot of stuff to cover about the new clinic. So a bunch of updates. Uh, we, we slash Ashley, mostly <laughs> Ashley, has been dealing a lot with the build out of the new clinic. Um, as many of you know, we switched general contractors. What? what how long has it been now? couple like a month and a half I think so or so six to eight weeks we've had the new general contractor yeah and, and it's, it's been really great it's been great he's been he's been fantastic his name is Chuck um, he was actually recommended to us uh, by a construction management company that we were using previously mm -hmm. um, and he's got his stuff together man I'll tell yeah. you it's a it's a night and day he's he's a huge um, uh, important part of us getting this thing back on track yeah. and getting it built out so um, we you know What's what's it been like for you, kind of going back through all of this? Um, it's it's been frustrating. <laughs> yeah, to say the um, least. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's been frustration and just somewhat some degree of um, stress because I'm just I have a lot of things that we need to get squared away and um, decided upon so that when the project is ready for. Um, the cabinets and countertops and all of that to take place, we have everything ready to go. So just knowing that I have those deadlines has been a yeah. little bit stressful, but I, I do pr prefer that it's that way because I feel like we have more control of our actual build out now. We're and definitely it's been nice. more involved with it. Um, yeah. And you actually have responsibilities at the office other than doing the build out. So you've been having to kind yeah. of like, you know, uh, blend all of that in. But, yes. you know, that's we've been, you know, and I kind of told you guys a couple weeks ago that we've uh, really been more involved this time around. We've actually mm -hmm. had to go out and, and meet with different vendors to pick out different products yep. than what we were going to go with before and we have some of that stuff to show you right now um, and what do we got there first so the uh, the first one I have is our flooring and we are going with a floor source um, out of the uh, Scottsdale area and we've been working with Joe and he's been fantastic him and his team are great and the flooring that we chose is a luxury vinyl plank flooring and it's kind of more of a modern look. It kind of has a gray tone to it. But we weren't going to go with that first. What were we going, like luxury laminate? Well, yeah, it was more of a luxury laminate. Um, and it's like a snap together. A snap together um, structure. Like floating floor. Which, I guess, for office spaces where there's certain types of traffic, um, it's more difficult to change those out if one becomes damaged. So we have opted to go with that luxury vinyl plank. Right. So we have the durability that we need for the type of office space we have and an ease of exchanging out a plank if we would need to. And Joe in said the that, uh, Joe, the, the flooring guy, said that when you're like constantly either walking over or rolling chairs back and forth mm -hmm. over the, the laminate, it actually creates like these little bows in it and it degrades that material quicker right. than if we were to actually glue down the vinyl flooring. And it looks really awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. when you guys see it, I mean, it looks like real wood. Yeah, it's gonna look really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that we chose to go with with our flooring is instead of a wood baseboard, because for commercial spaces, I don't think that meets code. So we've chosen a plastic one that looks like the, the pretty white um, wider baseboard, so we're happy with that. Yeah, that they're kinda... not the, the cheap, like, you know, ones that you typically see in offices. Yeah. It just, it spruces it up a little bit, and it's not that much more expensive mm -mm. to go with. And we're, we're really looking to make, uh, you know, li nicer finishes, maybe right. not go with the highest end possible, but still keep things looking nice. Yes. Yeah. And then um, for our sound rooms and our uh, consult rooms, we're using a um, carpet tile squares and those are nice they're um, we were able to pick out a pattern that's subtle um, but kind of gives it some character and and keep in in line with the colors that we're trying to go with um, for our practice and the really nice thing about those is that if a piece of that carpet square gets worn down we can just 
you know, switch out that specific square. So that'll be nice and convenient. Um, and then the only other flooring really that we're doing in our bathrooms, we're putting some tile on um, the walls just because the sink and the toilet area can sometimes have moisture. Yeah. So. And then anything that they call them wet walls. So anything that mm -hmm. has a toilet or a sink on it, uh, code is actually having a four foot high yeah. uh, tiling. So, so water doesn't actually cause damage to the walls. Yeah. And we actually chose to go not just the wet walls, but one additional wall mm -hmm. that potentially could get some splash from the sink yeah. because we don't want to run into issues with that. So we decided to spend a little extra money to get that done as well. Right. Um, and the flooring guys are going to be the ones who actually do the wet walls there and I think they're actually installing our backsplash behind the reception area too is that right I I know Chuck was talking about that yesterday oh yeah I don't actually remember what we decided on that okay okay, okay. Well, I'll have to add that to the list yeah right another <laughs> thing right so um, we actually have the invoice here of the estimate of what the entire flooring for the entire space is going to be including yes. uh, everything including installation and it came out to what um, about thirteen thousand dollars and in some change but, yeah um, and you know Joe was really great he gave us a veterans discount mm. so um, that was you know, awesome. The gift that keeps on giving, I'll tell you what, like, <laughs> they already paid for my whole education. I don't know yeah. what else the, the military could get me other, anyway, uh, yeah. it's very, but we're very grateful yep. for, for that. Yep. So. so we're looking forward to that. It's going to look really nice in our space. Awesome. Okay. So the next one um, is the cabinets and we actually went to a bunch of different cabinet places, I feel like. Yes. It's exhausting. I, I'm actually still waiting on a quote from someone that's a couple weeks ago that I reached out to, but, um, we have since decided to go with this company. They're local here to Phoenix, of course, uh, Cabinets by Design, and we have been working with Chris um, at this uh, particular establishment. And we are going with an oak shaker cabinet. So it's and just for the record, this is not the style that I want, but I'm willing to make the concession because of cost. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's the shaker style it's a very flat shaker style so that was a nice um, compromise if you will because it it doesn't look as traditional it does have somewhat of a modern feel but ultimately we decided to do that because all of our cabinets are going to not really be part of like you can't see them they're in offices that aren't visible to our yeah. patients and customers so we just felt like we would choose a cheaper option on the cabinets, but yet still good quality and durable and would last. They are nice. I mean, they are nice. They, they are nice. They're high, they're high quality in terms of like durability and just feel. They don't feel like cheap particle board right. stuff, right. right? So, But what we save in cabinets, we, we put towards a nice countertop. Yeah. So that was kind of what we felt was the higher priority was the countertops. And so we have cabinets going where? So cabinets, there'll be a few cabinets in the reception, not many. Um, but enough for them to do their job. And then the manager's office will have cabinets, the um, audiologist workroom where they do all their um, repairs yeah. and all that. And then in the break room, the break room, the break room. Right. Yep. So that's okay, where our, that's, all. that's where our cabinets are going. And so for those for what, right now, those four rooms, what does that cost us? Um, that is costing us about 16,600. So just size 17. It's a good yeah. chunk of money. Yeah. I think so. our original estimate for cabinets was what, like 10,000? Yes. Yeah. And that was like lower quality. I think it was Home Depot. That was like a generic Home Depot. So yeah. I don't know that that would have really, we would have been happy with that. Yeah. Um, but with cabinets by design, we're getting something that's like a real wood product. Um, and they've been really... Well, here's the other thing is that like we never were involved with the process of like explaining what we wanted like right. measurement wise, like what height we wanted things, you know, what types of like drawers yeah. and files we wanted. There but when we went there, we were able to say like, we want this, mm -hmm. we need this height. And he's like, well, we can do this, we can do that. And so that's right. actually been really helpful because now we kind of know actually what we're going to get. <laughs> well, and some of the questions he was asking us, I, I hadn't even considered. I hadn't like, oh, I didn't, I didn't think about that, you know? So... I feel really confident um, that our cabinets will be exactly, you know, what we need. And we're going to go business. espresso color. Yeah, with so that. a darker color. Yeah, so we've got so for flooring, it's like this this gray or wood look. 
Yeah. And then we have the dark color of the cabinets. Mm -hmm. And then we go to countertops, which we're going to talk yes. about next. Countertops. So again, we're using someone local in Phoenix, um, accent, marble, and granite. And we were working with Jan for this project. And um, Jan's a guy. Yep. He's a very big, manly guy. Looks like he bodybuilds. Yeah. I think yeah. he works out. He definitely works out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for our countertops, um, we chose to go with something a little bit um, more of a wow factor yeah. for the reception desk when you first walk in. And so those pieces of stone are the where our primary expense for those countertops are. Yeah, so that's a quartz countertop. But yes. you know, anytime you go look at countertops, you have ones that are just like regular flat designs. There's not a whole lot of, you know, texture in them yeah. or any design in them. And then you have ones that kind of like are speckled with different stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have ones that are like gorgeous, like artistic-y kind mm -hmm. of like naturally flowing designs in them. Yeah. And so one of the slabs that we're going to be putting on the very front, right when you walk in the door, is this like really, really gorgeous. It's beautiful. Uh, like white, like marbly looking, you mm -hmm. know, with flowing. Color. And in fact, the funny thing is, is that um, when we went into this particular place, what's yes. the name of their, their place? Um, Accent. Accent. Mm -hmm. um, it's that we ended up picking out without knowing it the exact same stone that they have on their desk, their reception desk when yeah. you first walk in. Yeah. Uh, so we actually got to see like okay, instead of just looking at a little chunk, we actually got to look at a, a whole huge slab of yeah, it. Yeah, a whole slab of it, it's which was really pretty. really awesome. I really yeah. like it because it has the the white white um, main color, but then there's like some darker, almost like a black with some grays. It even had some gold um, hues within it and also blue, which yeah. our logo is blue, so we tend to, you know, um, like those, Identify those with that. blue colors. So. And your eyes are blue. Yeah, and my eyes are blue, so I mean, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so this is a good chunk of money. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a big chunk of money. Um, I will say though that, um, they also went down, they worked with us to get the price down. We changed out um, a few pieces of stone to kind of work closer to what we were hoping to spend. Right, so that's um, a good point actually because that main stone that we were talking about when you walk in, that's just one of the stones. And yes. then the rest of the reception area is going to be more of like a gray stone, mm -hmm. uh, nice darker gray. It's, it's a really darker gray and it almost has like wisps of white in it. It looks really sharp. Yeah. It's going to look really pretty. And then in the, what, the break room, the repair room, yes. and the manager's office yep. has more of like a white, a white with a little bit of flowy design in yeah. it as well. I think it's like a, a almost like a black wisp yeah. design. Yeah, wisp, is that, is that it? I'm calling it wisp because that's just what my brain, when I look at it, it looks like it's a wisp of yeah. color within it. Cool. I'll take it. I, don't <laughs> I care. mean... <laughs> You know how I am. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the total cost for countertops um, is about 19000 So. Um, yeah, and that's with installation. And they should be doing a really yeah. cool design on oh, the front, yeah. which is actually, so one of the cool things that Jan showed us is that in their showroom, instead of just having kind of like a regular waterfall mm -hmm. where it just goes out straight and cuts straight down, which has a nice look to it, they do something where like it comes out and then it kind of slants back in yeah. a little bit. It's and cool. it really gives it a cool look. So that'll be neat to see how their fabricators mm -hmm. design that. I'm excited about that. Yeah, so um, that, that'll be really cool. But, awesome. um, so, okay, so that's the stuff that we spent a lot of time driving around and picking up, you know, or picking out different things from mm -hmm. different places. But uh, just what was it yesterday you were out there? Yes. And they've had inspections for electric and like HVAC and stuff like that? Yes. So um, on Wednesday th this week, the inspectors came in and um, previously our electric did not pass code. So we had to have an extensive amount of that electric all redone. Um, and Chuck's team. I feel his, like they spent like a week or more straight. They got it done on electric. Quick. They were not supposed to be done until like next week, and they got it done early. So it's fantastic. They have been phenomenal. Yeah, so uh, except for one of the electricians came, almost bleed out, bled out on our uh, on the oh, job site. Yeah. He cut his wrist by like sliding like different wiring into a, like a pre-cut hole yeah. that maybe not have been done too well. Um, and he actually caught it. It went through, and he caught his wrist, and it mm -hmm. and he cut it right here. Actually passed out on the job site. Had to go to Mayo uh, get stitches. Uh, he's okay, uh, and he was chuckling about it the other day. So anyway, yeah. Um, but they've been doing a phenomenal job. Yep, they're great. So um, the electrician 
the inspection for electrical passed. The inspection for the air did not pass. However, um, they already have a solution for that. Something with... Like the filtering, with right? Putting a filter near our smoke detector so that dust and debris would not get up in there and, I don't know, cause it to malfunction yeah. potentially. Yeah, I don't want that. I'm not sure if that's, you know, specifically why, but um, again, so yeah, they're, they're, they already have a solution for the air and then they'll come back and inspect that and just get that approved. So um, yeah, things are moving along there. So we spent, I don't know, I was on the phone with you for like a half hour yesterday while we were talking yeah. about just the water. Yes. So something that Cliff and I didn't even know is that our we're, um, we have three sinks in our practice and each sink underneath it is having its own individual water tank. Now granted, they're, they're tiny, they're like 12 inches by 9 inches, but when you hadn't factored that in to going underneath there, that really changes the whole dynamic of like what type of sink slash vanity you yeah. may or may not be able to use. So they're use. kind of like insta-hot is what they call them, That's I think. They call it. Yeah, so you don't actually have a water tank. Water comes from a line, yeah. it gets immediately like heated Right, inside of right. this water heater and thing. we weren't we weren't aware that that was how it was structured yeah and the the bummer about it is that we can't go back and just get a regular water tank because all of the plumbing that's been done was done specifically for these um, insta hot right tanks. and really the problem is it's not really that that's a problem the problem is is that our restrooms got cut down by yes. a foot and a half or something mm -hmm. ridiculous, um, barely within ADA code. And mm -hmm. I'm going to apologize right now because um, that's a big deal for yeah. patients in wheelchairs yeah. and It'll things like that. Um, but the, the only way around that would have been to either go down to one restroom, break out wall, move all the plumbing. Like we're talking 50 to 75K worth of work probably to change the bathrooms beyond what they are right now. Yeah. And it's just like so far out of the budget. Mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we're changing some things in terms of the vanity and all of that to where a wheelchair can go in. It still is ADA compliant. I just wanted it to be significantly larger than ADA compliant because yeah. it just makes it easier yeah. and more convenient. And, and the one thing too about that is the aesthetics of the washrooms may not be what we had yeah. anticipated because of the limitations of our space. And to be honest, I'm kind of like, I've, I'm past that. I'm fine with, with not having to it's have gonna, a specific floating vanity. It's going to bug me every day that I work there. <laughs> so essentially, if we are going to accommodate ADA um, compliance, we have to have a vanity that it can be like a 30 inch wide sink, but it can only be like an 18 deep vanity to accommodate a wheelchair in there. So, yeah. so I don't know if we'll be able to get a vanity in there or not, but, um, so I'm just kind of like just telling myself that we're not going to have a vanity. Yeah. <laughs> so what's our timetable on, on this right now? I mean, you, you finished up with Chuck out there on yeah. Friday, so. Well, I mean, I think, I think things are going to like move along really quick. Um, I know that this weekend that they're, um, they're working this weekend. Um, they're putting in the um, insulation. Oh, okay, insulation they're, they're putting drywall. in the in, they're putting in the insulation, okay. and they're starting to do the drywall. And then, actually, on Monday, we have to stop by the clinic. They're going to give us a um, couple examples of the different types of drywall, the that texture, texture of yeah. it, and um, one of the 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 big decisions is if we're going to go with the flat versus like a semi-textured. He said it was something like a spoon, like a scrape or semi-texture, I don't know. Yeah, something just like that. not a ton of texture, but just enough because the thing with like a flat texture, and this is what I've noticed in our own house here, is our walls are a flat texture and you can see the seams, you can see any... Like any little imperfection. Yeah, you can, you totally can see, see it all. So I, I can understand how um, they're trying to encourage us to not go with the flat. And to be honest, I don't really want to go with the flat. I don't want to mm. see those imperfections. Yeah. And I guess I'm going to like defer to that yeah. to you again. <laughs> so I, want, I also want to talk about glass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so glass, um, that, that was a 
bit of a concern, but it's it's all squared away. We are going to be using the same company that um, we were initially, and um, they're working with us. Um, Trying to figure out what we're doing with them because we, we want to be careful about sound transfer, but we also want to make sure that we have enough glass in there that some natural light comes in and makes the place yeah. seem a little bit more open, especially now since we've been compressed a little bit right. inside of the space. I don't think we're going to have an issue with that. I The, the glass company has sent me a few pictures over um, on Thursday, and I think it looks really cool. Um, the exact design of how that glass is going to be in, what, what the framing around that glass looks like is not honed down yet, but they are very familiar with having to work with spaces where acoustics is a high priority. They have worked with libraries before. So I'm, I am confident that they will, you know, keep that into consideration when they're designing uh, the glass for our offices. Do we have any idea what the cost of that is going to be for the glass? Um, I'm going to just guess that it's going to cost between sixteen to twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Based off of the original estimate back in March. Okay, so yeah. that was that was a quote that they had originally done. Yes. Okay. The only thing I don't know is I don't think that that quote included a laminate glass, which is really where you get a lot of. Um, not soundproof, but... But additional attenuation of sound. Yes. That's in my realm right there. Yeah. Attenuation. Attenuation. And, yeah, decibel levels and acoustics. Yeah. Yes. The <laughs> other thing that they had mentioned, too, was when they um, do glass walls for libraries, they actually put insulation around the framing of the glass, um, which will be really good, too, because where, the, where those offices meet, that'll yeah. help keep it you know, really insulated and yeah. sound, not sound. I know the building but... that we're in right now, any of the offices that are kind of have adjoining like windows, it's like you're, when you're talking, like you yeah. can hear the people in the other room, like they're sitting right next to you yeah. and it's unacceptable. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen yeah. to us. Oh man, I, I just know that when we move into our new office that it's going to be night and day difference acoustics wise. Yeah. Because right now, I mean, there might as well not be a wall in his office. Yeah. Like, I mean, and I'm a loud guy. I don't think there's any insulation. Yeah. I mean, you can just hear everything. Yeah. So well, there you go. I think it'll be great. Cool. All right. Anything else? I don't think so. So I mean, we have other things to pick out. Like we have to, we do we have our paint colors too. We have to pick out paint yeah. and what accent walls, what color those are going to be. Um, make that decision on like reception chairs, mm -hmm. um, those kinds of things. But I don't think we're quite ready to go. Yeah. I mean, I guess we, we could peruse those ideas. We've got a sound booth. We're going to get an Echo sound booth uh, oh, yeah. for, for the sound booth room. Mm -hmm. um, we were originally going to have the sound booth in the back corner, but we're actually going to move it uh, for the uh, up, up to the left hand side is where we're going to put the sound yeah. booth and then there'll be some extra space in there to mm -hmm. put and store some other things too but it'll be a nice big sound booth which will be mm -hmm. really cool that'd be awesome yeah so cool. that's exciting so there there's your update there's mm -hmm. obviously a lot of stuff has gone on since i last kind of uh talked about this that we're getting back on track mm -hmm. we're estimating to be done some point in november with as quick as yeah. chuck's team's working really the only thing that i think could delay us to any degree is just waiting for all the suppliers to actually get yeah. the the products to us. Yeah. You know, glass is the one thing that I think is potentially going to, you know, not delay, but it'll be like one of the last things that's done. Yeah, because I, I know that the cabinets, the flooring and countertop, like there's not a huge um, wait time once they place the order to getting the product in. I think it was like a two week, once you order the cabinets, you know, get those in in two weeks. So I don't yeah. think we're going to be delayed. Are all those things done in the United States, made in the United States? Because I know that there was some concern that like different flooring types um, had to come in from China and with delays with COVID and all that. I know with the original luxury vinyl um, tile that we had picked out, there was some back orders going on, but Joe didn't mention no. anything about Good. the products that we've chosen. Good. Because so I'm ready to move. Yeah. 
Now, I know that my patients in Anthem aren't ready for us to move, yeah. but we're going to try to make it as easy for them as possible, yeah. you know, going forward. I'm so. excited. It's going to yeah. look really nice. Awesome. Okay. Well, Ashley, thank you for joining yeah. the vlog it's today. It's good to be back. You pretty much did the whole vlog today. I did. I shouldn't even have showed up. <laughs> 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 but nonetheless, um, well, that is it for this week's vlog. Of course, if you guys liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it if you like. And as always, we will see you next week.